Well, I want to just do a little uh, introduction to why why we do what we do, what is the purpose, and how to get there, how to re reduce results, because I assume we all want results. We, I am seeing all of you as professionals, so the application is in professional practice, but it is also has a personal development side to it, of course. That's the beauty of it, uh, the, that you work on yourself before you work on others. That was a, 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 an insight of Feldenkrais, but many others. If you work on yourself, you become a better practitioner. So the equanimity I see in is coming up, believe me, is coming up strong. I have groups I've seen all over the place, friends and colleagues who are now doing mindfulness for people who are suffering trauma and, and confusion and anxiety. So mindfulness groups are growing, not diminishing, expanding enormously okay uh, and the second realm where equanimity and that's where the equanimity comes in because mindfulness leads to equanimity that is the point of the of the mindfulness practice is to put yourself in a place where you can feel things see things better act better and the equanimity also has a very other a big practical sign believe it or not in sports and in performance mm -hmm. So, but even on television, they're beginning to show it. Famous players, basketball is one I watch, tennis. Um, this is LeBron James, the one of the greatest players, age 39, an incredible man who, who learned to, in the arts of practicing meditation and mindfulness, which is really equanimity. And, before, and he's playing in a game, and he, he's sitting in the bench, and there are 70,000, 60,000 people all making noise, and he is just as you see. He sits and he enters into equanimity in that context. And then the other day, they were, his team was 10 points behind. He went to the bench, sitting down in the last quarter of the play. There's four parts. And his team was 10 points behind. He goes into equanimity. He and his partner, Anthony Davis, they both go into equanimity. You see it in the breathing they do before they shoot, and they win by two points. And they show the, the first thing on television. They show him in equanimity. I believe that equanimity is going to be growing very big in the sports world because of people like, like uh, LeBron and many others who are finding the great value. Uh, um, Philip Jackson was the teacher of the Chicago Bulls, Michael Jordan. Equanimity is big. So that's, for practitioners, a big field, apart from... You know the the, the 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 people who need the, the help from re, re, uh, the elderly, and uh, not only the elderly, but the people who need the rehabilitation, people who need to work with um, their anxiety. So we are, in a certain sense, those of us who are well prepared. You have an enormous opportunity here, and that's why this course is a base for that. Exactly. Okay. So that's where my vision is, and. So that uh, you have you you you're going to see uh, uh, if those who practitioners who learn not only the movement, but how to take people into equanimity, and the breathing, will be the most successful practitioners. That's my prediction. <laughs> As you know, predictions are not guaranteed. So this is opportunity. That's how I see it. But it's also the personal benefit, because that was the way to really enhance your professional practice. So that's why we show sometimes you, if you look closely, and we're going to work with some of these principles that the athletes and others and the mindfulness people use about the breathing and about the movement in the body, which is the missing piece. That's what they never teach and never show. See, that's the big missing piece. That's why we can offer something. Direction of movement enhances equanimity access. Write that down. Direction of movement with clarity and precision around the center of gravity enhances access to equanimity. You could make that a little sentence, that a guided line sentence. And otherwise, you it takes a long it takes a long time of practice to get into equanimity for most people. But this is why I'm doing what I'm doing because we're using the movement vehicles and the breathing vehicles. 
and the specifically the pathway directional vehicles, not just movement, what kind of movement, specific movement that is efficient. Okay, so today I'm going to help. Okay, so this is just the intro. Now, as we enter the first phase, this, I want you to join with me. The uh, with, I'm using that image of the clock because I, oh, I, we had that back in 1972 when I saw that, and the pelvic clock, all of you know, right? But the pelvic clock is two-dimensional. I sent you photos, so I hope you all have them. I actually have expanded the idea of the clock to have many kinds of clocks, small ones, little ones, big ones, but they're three-dimensional and even four-dimensional. That's what I'm going to show you today.